Good morning and evening or uh, what have you. And thank you for listening to my presentation on self-other integration in rhythmic synchronization. So my name is uh, Ola Adrian Hegli and I work at the Center for Music in the Brain at Aarhus University. So let's start off with just like a tiny bit of background. When uh, interacting with other people, we often tend to synchronize, for instance, such as synchronizing steps when walking together or general body movement during a well, non-digital conversation. Uh, and in music, synchronization is often a necessity for our successful musical performance. How people synchronize is often studied using a reduced or a controlled paradigm, such as joint finger tapping, where people tap simple rhythms uh, together. And from these taps, you can then extract various messages, such as how well uh, synchronized they, they were. Yet, synchronization is not just synchronization. And by that, I mean that synchronization is more than just a linear transition between uh, unsynchronized and uh, synchronized. And in particular, there exists uh, differences in how people synchronize uh, to each other, which we can assess by performing cross-correlation on their intertap intervals. Uh, and if you plot these at uh, lag minus one, zero, and plus one, you get these characteristic patterns, which I tend to call uh, synchronization uh, strategies. Um, note the quotation marks there, as this type of behavior is not just and not always uh, a chosen strategy. Uh, instead, they may behave, uh, they may emerge uh, dynamically from the interaction and they can be uh, chosen by one or more of the participants or they can be forced by experimental uh, constraints. In, uh, in previous work, we have shown that there is at least three uh, distinct synchronization strategies. Um, mutual adaptation is perhaps the most common one wherein diet members uh, continuously and reciprocally adapt to each other on a tap-to-tap -tap basis. Um, in leading following, um, one of the diet members is less adaptive, hence forcing the other one to be more adaptive for synchronization to uh, occur. Uh, leading leading is a little bit of a special case, I think, wherein our diet manages to achieve good synchronization, uh, yet there appears to be little to none uh, adaptation between the diet members. Uh, looking to model these uh, strategies, we previously found that our Kuramoto-based couple oscillator um, model is uh, able to reproduce synchronization strategies, but only when you model each person as two linked uh, oscillators. So we interpreted these oscillators as proxies for, uh, for action uh, and for perception, wherein action then is linked to the self, what you yourself is doing, and perception is linked to what the other person is doing. Running a parameter search on this model, we found that the three synchronization strategies depend on the uh, within unit and between unit coupling weights, with, for instance, uh, mutual adaptation requiring a much larger between unit coupling than within unit coupling. So this model serves as a good starting point for, for a representation of the bottom up, or I guess in lack of a better word, mechanical uh, processes underlying synchronization strategies. Um, however, the cognitive aspect is of course still missing. And in its uh, published version, there is no changes in these uh, coupling weights or noise profiles in the uh, model, meaning that it likely doesn't quite capture how a real world interaction evolves over time. In our latest work, we try to get to the cognitive or top-down aspects of synchronization by looking at interpersonal sync through mechanism of self-order integration, or in other words, trying to quantify how much you let the actions of the other person influence your own actions and the mechanisms responsible for deciding that in order to figure out what are the top-down aspects of synchronization strategies. So here's our attempt at that. We call it me and so short for the meta-stable attractive model of self-order integration, and it's due to come out in Phil Trans B soon. So the uh, foundational assumption of me so is that we maintain pre predictive cognitive models for the self and the other, meaning for what you yourself is doing and for what you think the other person is doing. So this one is an information processing model where calculations are performed at events and the two main modules in MEMSO is one performing instantaneous comparisons over here and another one performing correlational comparisons. Um, for instance, it does uh, comparisons between the time of coinciding events and their auditory features, 
which each, each then produces a value indicating whether the current event should be attributed to yourself or to the other person. Uh, the correlational comparisons, they take into account previous events, uh, such as, for instance, our time lag uh, similarity to account for a, con a constant delay, as well as accumulating previous instantaneous uh, comparisons. Uh, there's plenty of details here uh, for which I refer to the paper or the code on GitHub. So these output values are then summed in favor for an event being best described by one unified predicting model, um, or in other words, what I'm hearing is closely related to what I'm doing, or two separate predictive models, meaning that what I'm hearing is related to what I predicted the other person is doing. So we set this up so that it creates a metastable system wherein the system has two attractors or metastable states, one where there's self-other integration, uh, meaning that one over here, and another one where there is self-other segregation. Uh, yeah, and uh, note that I mean metastable in the in the classical sense here, uh, in what some in the field would describe as uh, multi-stable. The way NIMSO is set up uh, exhibits hysteresis, meaning that the current state depends on the history of prior states in the system. Uh, and here's just like an example hysteresis curve shown for some given parameters. Uh, to test this one, we stitched together a trial uh, where a dyad performed a mutual adaptation with another trial where they performed leading following. Running the model from the perspective of dyad member one, the leader, we can see that it starts off in state two, meaning self order segregation, uh, that's the default starting point, um, before quickly dropping then to state one, meaning self order integration. But once the interaction changes, switches to leading following, it returns to state two self order segregation with a bit of jumping at the end here. But when you run it from the perspective of uh, diet member two, the follower, we can see that it quickly settles on self order integration and remains there throughout the interaction. Now, this model only has two states, but when you combine two persons in the diet, that means that you get three unique combinations, which neatly maps onto the three known synchronization strategies. So we have Leading leading, where both of them then segregates. Uh, leading following, where one of them integrates and the other one segregates. And uh, finally, mutual adaptation, where they both uh, integrate. You can get more details in the man manuscript. Uh, now, this model makes quite a few predictions, but here are three of them. So synchronization strategies are dynamic, meaning that they can change and readjust during an interaction, perhaps depending on multiple parameters. and. Uh, here I plan to combine the MEMSO and the current model model to uh, perturbate uh, simulated interactions and then verify with experiments. Uh, similar sounds are more likely to lead to self order integration, meaning that if you play together with similar sounds, one would expect a lower threshold for self order integration. Uh, this way we can this we can test in many ways, but the easiest would be to, for instance, adjust sounds during a joint finger tapping task. And finally, uh, a sh shift between integrating and segregating should be observable in the brain. Uh, this one I really hope to have done by now, but experiments were put on hold and now there's a long queue for the MG system, uh, hopefully later this year, uh, year though. Uh, we do have some EG data, which is out in scan now, uh, pointing towards a network of interest, uh, uh, crucially covering some interesting regions such as the right temporoparietal junction and the precuneus. And, uh, that's it for me. Uh, thank you for listening. Much of this work was done together with uh, Ivana at Design Lab, uh, Peter here in Oidus, and Morten and Joanna over in uh, Oxford. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email and you can find the uh, papers and uh, code on the links here. Um, thank you.